Welcome to the house of the Lord. We invite you to stand up with us this evening. We have a glorious celebration today, amen? Let's sing together, Asus con Voyos.
adunați în locul acesta să declarăm că Dumnezeu este Mântuitorul nostru. Așa cum am cântat, noi suntem copii ai Domnului. Toți aceia care ne-am predat viața lui Dumnezeu, care ne-am hotărât să ne despărțim de lumea păcătoasă, suntem la dispoziția Domnului și în după masa aceasta doresc ca Domnul să ne binecuvinteze. Spunea Domnul Iisus, Atunci când un suflet se întoarce la Dumnezeu, este o mare bucurie. Spunea el, tot așa vă spun că va fi o mai multă bucurie în cer pentru un singur păcătos care se bucăiește decât pentru 99 de oameni neprihăniți care n-au nevoie de pocăință. Prezența noastră în casa Domnului este o declarație că vrem Să ne întoarcem la Domnul și să ne pocăim. Apoi, persoanele care sunt îmbrăcate în alb în ziua de azi și încheie legământ cu Domnul prin botezul în apă, declară că vor să aparțină împărăției lui Dumnezeu. Și toată biserica zicem, Domnul să-i ajute. Amen. De aceea vrem să ne rugăm în după masa aceasta ca părtășia pe care Domnul ne-o dă să fie binecuvântată de El. Să ne rugăm pentru tinerii care se botează, să ne rugăm pentru noi care suntem aici, să ne rugăm pentru cei care poate încă n-au un legământ cu Domnul prin botezul în apă, Dumnezeu să le atingă inimile. De aceea, așa cum stăm, cu toții ne rugăm Domnului. Binecuvântat să fie Dumnezeu! Îi mulțumim Lui Dumnezeu că ne găsim în această seară în casa Lui. Este un lucru minunat ca să fim aici la această frumoasă sărbătoare. Psalmul 117, care este cel mai scurt psalm din Biblie, aflat în centrul Bibliei, nu la voia întâmplării, ci pentru că Dumnezeu ne cheamă pe toți, pe toți oamenii, ca să-i aducem laudă Lui Dumnezeu. Lăudați pe Domnul toate neamurile, lăudați-L toate popoarele, căci mare este bunătatea Lui față de noi și credincioșia Lui ține în veci. Lăudați pe Domnul, glorie Lui Dumnezeu! Vă zicem tuturor, un bun venit în casa Lui Dumnezeu în seara aceasta și Dumnezeu să vă cerceteze pe fiecare și Dumnezeu să binecuvinteze pe aceia care s-au hotărât în această seară să încheie legământ cu Domnul, Domnul să-i binecuvinteze. Vă rog cu respect să vă reocupați locurile și în continuare vom asculta o cântare în interpretarea corului de tineret, apoi sora Vanessa Antone va lăuda numele Domnului cu un solo.
Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. And does our God intend to do? When I decided to get baptized, I, um, I prayed to God to help me write this song, and uh, the Holy Spirit <laughs> gave me these lyrics, so here it is.
pentru această sărbătoare. Doresc în mod deosebit să salut și împreună cu toții din conducerea bisericii dorim să salutăm toți musafirii și toți prietenii candidaților de botez care astăzi încheie legământ cu Domnul. Vă zicem bun venit în Biserica Maranata, Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze și să vă facă să vă bucurați în seara aceasta, în mod deosebit, împreună cu cei care se botează și să-i felicitați pentru decizia deosebită care au luat-o în viața lor. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze! În continuare, dragii mei, doresc să cântăm spre slava lui Dumnezeu o cântare și în timpul acestei cântări să onorăm pe Domnul cu darurile noastre de bunăvoie. Avem o datorie sfântă să susținem lucrarea lui Dumnezeu care se desfășoară în mijlocul nostru prin donația noastră benevolă, potrivit cuvântului lui Dumnezeu care ne învață din Cartea Proverbelor, capitolul 3, versetul 9 și 10. Cinstește pe Domnul cu averile tale și cu cele din tâi roade din tot venitul tău, căci atunci grânarele îți vor fi pline de belșug și teascurile tale vor geme de must. Doresc ca Dumnezeu să ne binecuvinteze, să facem această donație cu bucurie pentru slava lui Dumnezeu. În timpul cântării în comun vom face și colecta. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit.
citească Biblia în fiecare an, cam din 2013 până acum, în fiecare an avem un program de citire a Bibliei în fiecare zi pe parcursul unui an. În această după amiază vom citi cuvântul lui Dumnezeu din Faptele Apostolilor, capitolul 10. Va fi citit în limba engleză de fratele Nathanael Filip. Vă invit cu respect să vă ridicați pentru a da cinste citirii cuvântului lui Dumnezeu. Good evening, church. We'll be reading from Acts 10. I'll be reading from the ESV. A Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household, gave alms generously to the people, and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come in and say to him, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror, and he said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants and a devout soldier from among those who attended him. And having related everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. And he became hungry and wanted something to eat. But while they were preparing it, he fell into a trance and saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending, being let down by its four corners upon the earth. In it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice came to him again a second time, saying, What God has made clean does not call common. This happened three times, and the thing was taken up at once to heaven. Now, while Peter was inwardly perplexed as to what the vision that he had seen might mean, behold, the men who were sent by Cornelius, having made inquiry for Simon's house, stood at the gate and called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was lodging there. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for your coming? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright and God-fearing man, who was well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and to hear what you have to say. So he invited them in to be his guests. The next day he rose and went away with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. And on the following day, they entered Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them, and he had called together his relatives and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many persons gathered. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I asked them, Why you sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in a bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send them, send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner by the sea. So I sent for you at once and you have been kind enough to come. Now, therefore, we are, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea. Beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. Amen. Amen. Pentru cei care ați avut posibilitatea și ați fost azi dimineață împreună cu noi, vreau să repet încă o dată ce am spus azi dimineață, iar pentru cei care nu ați fost, vreau să vă spun că ne bucurăm într-un mod deosebit să-l avem pe doctorul Shannon Hill, împreună cu soția lui Cheryl și fiica al dânșilor Lauren, Dânsul este Administrative Bishop peste bisericile de la Church of God din California și Nevada. Aș vrea să le spunem încă o dată bun venit și Dumnezeu să-i binecuvintează. We'd like to welcome you, O'Neill family, and we're happy to have you with us. And uh, uh, Brother Sean will preach the word. However, before that, uh, I would like to ask Lauren. She is a musician and would like to sing a song. Haideți să zicem Dumnezeu să o binecuvinteze. God bless you.
Fiecare ființă este o persoană deosebită. Nu suntem toți la fel. Dar fiecare avem nevoie ca în viața noastră să lucreze Dumnezeu. Fiecare avem nevoie să ne deschidem inima a acela care poate să ne transforme și să ne ajute să avem siguranța mântuirii. E o participare a vieții noastre împreună cu Dumnezeu. Domnul bate la ușa inimii noastre, noi trebuie să deschidem ușa ca El să intre înăuntru, să schimbe viața noastră și să ne ajute să putem să vedem, devenim copiii săi. În după masa aceasta, vedeți în fața dumneavoastră suflete care s-au hotărât să-L urmeze pe Domnul. By no means, ei nu, sunt, ei nu sunt perfecți, dar au dorința aceasta ca bunătatea lui Dumnezeu și îndurarea lui Dumnezeu, care poate să-i transforme, să le ajute pentru tot restul să îl urmeze pe Domnul. De aceea îi binecuvântăm și zicem Domnul să le poarte de grijă. Amen. În loc să vi prezentăm noi, o să rugăm pe fiecare dintre ei să, să se prezinte, să aibă un cuvânt pentru dumneavoastră și băieții totdeauna sunt de, de acord ca fetele să înceapă. So, would you give a mic to... Yeah. Vanessa will be first, yeah. Go ahead. Good evening, church. My name is Vanessa Antone. I was born and raised into a wonderful Christian household, and I've been attending Maranatha for most of my life. I want to start off by saying how blessed I am to be a part of such a supporting community and how much of an effect and influence the youth has had in my life. I also want to thank my family and friends for supporting me in my walk with Christ. Two years ago, on October 16th, 2018, during Study Wednesday week, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Since then, I've developed a passion and love for coming closer to God. The reason why I want to get baptized is that I want to proclaim Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and that I want to follow him forever and ever. I also want to declare to the world and to Satan that I belong to Jesus. The verses I chose are 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, and it says this, For God has not called you for impurity, but in holiness, in Psalms 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The reason why I chose these verses is when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, God gave me 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, and he did again during my prayer and fasting for my baptism, as well as Psalms 27, 1. Thank you, and God bless you, church. Hello, my name is Denisa Antona and I am 15 years old and today I want to get baptized because I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yes. I was born in a Christian family and grew up coming to church every week. On October 18th, 2018, I was baptized by the Holy Spirit and received the gift of speaking in tongues. Since then, my life changed for the better and I have made Christ the center of my life. I have seen God work in my life so many times. When I need him most, he never fails. He brings me joy, comfort, and guidance. He has never forsaken me and I'm blessed to call him my friend. Today, I want to declare that I have decided to serve and follow Jesus for the rest of my life. The verse that I chose is Psalm 73, 25, and 26. Whom have I in heaven but you? And the earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and portion forever. God bless you. God bless you. Hello, church. Um, my name is Priscilla Ujwa, and I'm 16 years old. I was born in a Christian family, and I have been in this church my whole life. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit on June 16, 2018, at the summit. My favorite verse is Psalms 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and, and, I, ho and I am helped. 
Therefore, my heart gr sorry, <laughs> greatly rejoices, and my song, I will praise him. And I am here today to get baptized, to follow Jesus Christ, because I love him, and I found peace within him. And I am prepared to go through great and difficult trials. And I hope that I may be used as a tool for Christ, that my faith will grow with him in my walk with Jesus. Amen. God bless. Hello, church. My name is Benjamin Uzva. I'm, I'm 19 years old. And uh, I'm grateful to be here today to be able to have this opportunity to be baptized in this church with everything that's going on. Um, the verse that I have is Romans, five, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 14. And it goes, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. And honestly, the, the reason that I decided to get baptized was because I'm just, you know, my past life has just been living in sin. And I haven't really been paying too much attention to, to God. And I just decided that, you know, I, I got to get rid of this sin that's holding on to me. And so... That's why I'm, I'm I'm here today. I just want to say thank thank you to my parents, and my my brothers and sisters, and my grandparents as well for all the support. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Hello, church. Uh, my name is Jason Mihulet, and I'm 15 years old. I've been going to Maranata since I was a, a baby, and I was blessed with amazing and loving parents that would bring me to church and guide me in the right direction, and awesome siblings that would bring me to youth events, which actually started my walk with God. My first experience with God was in 2015 at a youth conference in L.A. that my older siblings bring me to called Revive where God touched my heart and changed me forever. Ever since then, I would go to youth conferences, youth events, prayer nights, and camps like the summit where I, would, where I met with God and grew in my faith and relationship with him. Last year in 2019, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues at a prayer night here at Maranatha. And since then, I would serve God wherever I was needed in church, from being in youth choir to stacking chairs to helping at kids' events. And today, I want to get baptized to publicly announce and devote my life to God for the rest of my life. And the uh, verse I chose is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you very much. Dumnezeu se binecuvinteze. Îmi place că fiecare are o Biblie foarte mare. And every one of them is ready to preach. Girls are even doing better. For this generation, we need everybody to be a preacher. Dumnezeu să-i folosească. Și să binecuvinteze părinții care i-au crescut. Bunicii care i-au supravegheat. Frații care i-au mai corectat, mă refer frații de corp. Și biserica Domnului din loc, Domnul pe toți să ne binecuvinteze. Candidații care se botează vor lăuda pe Domnul cu o cântare.
Și spuneam adinea ori că fiecare dintre ei au o Biblie frumoasă. Vrem să îi anunțăm că după botezul din seara aceasta, din partea bisericii, fiecare vor avea o Biblie din partea bisericii, cum spuneam, cu numele lor inscris pe Biblie, pe care am vrea să-l folosească și Dumnezeu să-i binecuvinteze. De asemenea, să își amintească de ziua aceasta a botezului, Fiecare vor avea un certificat de care să-și, prin care să-și amintească că într-o zi au mărturisit înaintea Domnului că vor să slujească. Din partea tineretului vor avea de asemenea un plic cu o felicitare pentru că toți tinerii bisericii îi iubesc și cred că numele lor vorbesc în seara aceasta și doresc ca Domnul să-i crească pentru el și să-i slujească Domnului toată viața lor. Câteva anunțuri și apoi vom continua cu lucrarea. Marți seara, deci în două zile, la ora șapte după masă, aici la biserică va avea loc în premieră sau de prima dată o repetiție a tuturor surorilor care vor să cânte într-o formație pregătitoare pentru Christmas Concert și toate de la 12 ani în sus, nu cred că este limită, poate să vină și să participe în această formație de a lăuda numele Domnului. Miercuri seara, întâlnirea bisericii de peste săptămână la părtășie și rugăciune, după care joi repetiția corului mixt, vineri la ora 7 după masă, întâlnirea conducerii bisericii, iar serărei sâmbătă, 31 octombrie, Haleluia Night. Pentru toți părinții, care au copii, sunt încurajați să vină la biserică, am uitat, de la 4 sau de la 5 după masă? 4, mulțumesc frate Alin, de la 4 după masă, simați părinții, duceți aici, pe când se întunecă, vor fi aici la biserică, vor avea părtășie, vor avea o mică slujbă divină, vor avea pizza și vor sta în casa Domnului să-i păzim de tot ce este rău afară. Noi nu credem Și nu practicăm Halloween. Noi practicăm și lăudăm numele Domnului, de aceea am numit seara aceasta Haleluia Night. Pentru toți părinții, țineți cont, vă rugăm de lucrul acesta. Apoi, cu ajutorul Domnului, duminica viitoare va fi prima duminică a lunii a noiembrie. La slujba de dimineață vom sluji, vom avea parte și posibilitatea să stăm la masa Domnului, cina cea de taină și slujba de asemenea după masă de la ora 6. Din partea celor de la Bookstore, suntem încurajați să trecem pe la Bookstore, au reduceri de 50% pentru interesele dumneavoastră, vă rugăm să țineți cont de lucrul acesta și să ne vizitați bookstore-ul care este la dispoziția dumneavoastră. Ne închinăm Domnului împreună în continuare cu un trio, sora Laura, Cristina și Carolyn, după care corurile combinate, corul mixt și corul de tineri vor lăuda numele Domnului, ca toate acestea să ne preagătească inimile, să ascultăm cuvântul lui Dumnezeu, rugându-ne ca Domnul să folosească pe fratele Șanonil și Duhul Sfânt să ne vorbească. For this. 
of the joy or trial when agonizing questions rise in Jesus all my hope abides for this cause I live for this cause I die I surrender
Good evening. I pray that everyone is doing well tonight. And what a great night this is. A wonderful evening to gather together and celebrate five incredible young men and women who are not only dedicating themselves to Christ, but are professing to the world. We have dedicated ourselves to the grace, peace, and the commitment to follow Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. I'm going to read from Acts chapter 2, verse 14, and then I'll skip over to verse 37. The Bible says this, but Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Peter goes on from there and preaches a sermon. But then in verse 37, the Bible says this about the people that were listening to him preach. Now, when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? I read that again for emphasis. When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord will, God will call to himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. In this passage of Scripture, we find that something dramatic has taken place. Something significant and powerful has happened in history, not only history in the church, but history in the world. You see, this chapter, Acts chapter 2, is the culmination moment that Jesus would prophesy about and communicate to them. In fact, that the prophet Joel would prophesy about and communicate to us through the word under the direction of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. And in Acts chapter 2, it is that culminating moment. Jesus had told the apostles to go wait for him in Jerusalem, and he would send them the comforter, the Holy Spirit, that Greek word dunamis, power. You shall receive power. And in this moment, they were there, and they'd gathered in this upper room on this rooftop in Jerusalem, and they had prayed until something would happen, and something did happen. The power of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. The Bible says it was as if it was a rushing mighty wind, or it was a sound as a rushing mighty wind, a storm. I grew up in the Tampa, Florida area, and a rushing mighty wind for us would be a hurricane. My wife grew up in Indiana in the Midwest United States, and a rushing mighty wind for them would be a tornado. But I must tell you, on this day in Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 2, that sound of a rushing mighty wind was not a hurricane. It was not a tornado. It was not a typhoon or a cyclone. It was not a heavy rainstorm. It was the power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit blew into that room. Well, around that area, there were people from all different languages. People had gathered in Jerusalem. They had gathered there for this feast of Passover. They had gathered there to celebrate, but they had never heard this sound before. And on that morning, very early in the morning, they heard this sound and some of them thought to themselves, these people must be drunk. 
but it's only early in the morning. Peter got up and he began to preach and he first of all said to them, Men of Judea, listen to me and all who, you can, all who can hear me, listen, this is not what you think. These men are not drunk as you suppose. This is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. And as they stood there and listened to Peter preach, all of these people, gathered around wondering, what is going on here in Jerusalem? What is happening in this place? It is like there is a fire happening. There is like there's something going on. There's something extraordinary. And they listened to Peter preach. And he preached with power. And he preached with, with the authority of the Holy Spirit. And when he was finished preaching, they looked at him and the apostles. And they said, what should we do? Well, there are many people asking that question today. Some are asking that because they have no idea. Some are not even knowing the right question to ask, but in their heart, in their soul, they are longing for more. They have a deep longing in their soul for peace. There are many people in this world that cannot sleep at night. They have a hard time going to sleep at night and a difficult time waking in the morning. They struggle in life. They struggle with everything that's going on. Struggle with family. Struggle with belief system. Struggle with what will happen in this world. But I've got news for you tonight, and it's good news. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world that through him, the world might be saved. And you see right there in that question, it is a powerful question. It is a powerful, inquisitive moment where they say to Paul, Peter and the apostles, they say to Peter and the apostles, what should we do? What can we do to get what you have? I remember a few years ago, I was driving down the street one day and I was just having a good time praying in my car. Now maybe you've never had a good time praying in your car. I was probably listening to some worship music and worshiping God and praying. And I pulled up to a light and the light was red. And I stopped and I looked over beside me. And there were two guys in a work van and they were laughing at me and pointing at me. Because I probably look like a crazy person. Worshiping God all by myself in my car. Well, I must confess that I wasn't always sanctified. And the first thought that came to me in that moment was, I want to knock you out. <laughs> but then the Holy Spirit, I just sensed the Holy Spirit checking me. And saying to me or communicating through me, if they had what you have, they would be doing what you're doing. And this is that moment in Acts chapter 2. Peter, this fisherman guy, he never met a person that he couldn't fight, I believe. He was known to be bold and brash and, and he would do crazy things. And even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when they were there and the soldiers came, we know that he cut off the ear of a soldier and Jesus had to heal him right in that moment, that soldier. Because Peter was this tough guy and he probably wasn't the preacher guy in the moment that he followed Jesus. He was the fisherman guy and he grew up. He knew how to fish. He knew when to fish. He knew how to catch fish. He knew how to sell fish. He knew how to take people uh, and, and get them to the moment where they would probably buy fish. And he was a tough working guy. Get up early in the morning and work hard before sun comes up. And he did not have time for all that would be religious probably or spiritual and one day a man named Jesus stepped into his life and said come follow me and I will make you a fisher of men and Peter this fighter 
this contentious son of thunder would be born again and follow Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And on this moment, on this day, he would preach with power and authority and victory. And they would look at him and they would say, well, what can we do? What must we do to get what you have? And he simply said to them, repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's simple. That is pretty simple. That's a great formula. You mean I don't have to do penance and I don't have to pay money and I don't have to walk a million miles and I, I don't have to go and study for years and years and years. All I have to do is repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's it. You see, to repent simply means this, to turn away from sin and turn toward God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every person ever born, we're born into sin. And Romans chapter 6, verse 23 states this, that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says that whosoever shall call on the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. What a powerful statement. You see, it does not matter what we've done. It does not matter where we've been. It does not matter what we've thought. It does not matter what we've said. What, it, what matters is this. All the sin in our life, when we turn our lives to Jesus, is taken away. To God be the glory. Amen. Repent. There's a man named Nicodemus in Scripture. In fact, he's mentioned three times in the book of John. And in John chapter 3, we find that this Pharisee, this man who was a scholar, came to Jesus by night. Now, we don't know why he came to Jesus by night. We don't know if it was because he did not want anybody to see him. He didn't want anybody to know he was going to Jesus. He was going to talk with Jesus. We, we don't know all of the context, but we know this. He came to Jesus by night, and he came with a question. And he said to him, Rabbi, what does it mean to be born again? For how can somebody reenter their mother's womb? And be born a second time. And he was exaggerating a point in that moment. He knew better than to say that. Of course not. But he was pushing Jesus a little. What does it mean to be born again? Tonight I communicate to you. Repentance is tied with that very possibility. That we can be born again. And we can be born into Christ. Into Christ in such a way. And such a manner. That we are set free from sin. And now we have life for eternity. Forever and ever and ever. Because we follow Jesus. And when we follow Jesus. There's something deep within us. That compels us to lift up his name. And worship him. Peter said in that moment, repent. The second thing he said was be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be baptized tonight? Five individuals will be baptized. It simply means this, to publicly declare your stand. In Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 10, the Bible lays out what baptism is. It talks about baptism. It talks about the very fact that it is a representation of death in a sense. And the very thing that Jesus did, he died and went to a grave. And then he resurrected on the third day. Oh, to God be the glory. Now, let me just share something with you this evening for a moment. You see, there are a lot of people that will proclaim that they are a God. And there are a lot of people that will worship a lot of things in this world in history. Oh, there's the Buddhist that will worship a Buddha. And I must tell you tonight that there is no fat belly Buddha in a Chinese restaurant anywhere that can ever do one thing for you. Amen. 
There are Hindu gods that people will worship and they'll create out of their hands and they'll fashion them in the fire and they will make them thousands of Hindu gods and they make a god to anything so they don't miss one and don't leave one out. But the reality is there is not one of those Hindu statues that can do one thing for you and me. But there is a man named Jesus. He was crucified placed in a grave, and three days later, he resurrected. Now, let me push that a little further tonight. There are thousands of people who have been crucified, impaled, martyred, and killed on a cross or a stake. Thousands. And there really would be no power in the cross if Jesus never resurrected. Pastor Sean, you can't say that. But here's the reality. When Jesus got up out of the grave, the blood that was shed on the cross, there was power in that blood. There is power in that blood. There is power in the cross. There is power in the resurrection. And because he got up out of the tomb, he not only declared that I'm alive, but he declared that I am the Lord. He declared that he is the Lord. He is God Almighty. He is the resurrected one who brought victory. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He has the authority, and there is no one else, no one else in history that can do what he did or did what he did or does what he does. His name is Jesus Christ and he went to the tomb but on the third day he got up. I must tell you that there is power in the cross and there is power in the resurrection and baptism is the very symbolism of what Jesus did when he went to the tomb and he rose again. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Repent, be baptized. A little further on baptism. Baptism is that moment where we declare to the world, I'm saved. I am born again. I follow Jesus. Wow. Now let me just share with you for a moment tonight. There are perhaps those here among us, you were once baptized. And you say, well, that was then. 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, well, whenever it was, years ago. And life came. And challenges came. And difficulties came. And you've wondered, and you've wandered. But tonight I communicate to you that the same Jesus that you declared then is still alive and here now. And he has never quit calling your name to the Father. The Bible said that he intercedes for us. He cries out for us. He is a divine advocate for us. And I want to communicate to you tonight, if you have wandered or wandered or far away tonight, nobody here may even know it, but in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, you are not walking that walk. I communicate to you tonight, repent, repent, return, cry out to Jesus, forgive me, forgive me, cleanse me. Cleanse me, I come back to you. And if you're here tonight and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I communicate to you that he is calling your name. He has known you since even before you were born and he's calling your name. And his name is Jesus Christ. And if you will call upon him, you shall be saved. Follow him. These people gathered around. They said, what must we do? What shall we do? Repent. Be baptized. And third, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, it is very interesting that we live in this time that we live. And people will say, well, you know, does God exist? And I don't believe in religion or the church. But I communicate to you tonight, we're not here to celebrate religion 
in any form. We're here to celebrate Jesus Christ and the power of God and the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. You see, there is no building anywhere that will save you, but Jesus Christ is the bill is absolutely the cornerstone of the foundation of the church. Abraham was on a journey looking for the city whose builder and maker is God. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are calling out to us tonight. And in this culture that we live in right now, today, people will take anything for granted. And in many ways, they'll reject the very essence of what the Word of God is. But they'll receive whatever they can find or they hear. And I watch them, and we all watch, and we look, and we see. Our society is a disaster. Culture's a disaster. People are wandering and wandering, and they're hungry, and they're thirsty, and they're lonely, and they're despondent. But tonight, I share with you, wherever you are, that God had a plan, has a plan, And the plan was to send his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Jesus came to seek and save all who are lost. And Jesus sent his Holy Spirit. And so when Peter is preaching and he says, repent, be baptized, and then he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, there is something significant and powerful about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, it's not that I just go and I quietly walk along. I go with an intent. I go with a focus. I go with a dunamis power inside of me to absolutely turn cities upside down like the apostles did when they went to a city and they preached the gospel, something happened. When they went to the cities and they worked, even like Paul, the maker of tents, something happened. It was significant. It was powerful. It was real. In the city of Ephesus, Paul would go there. He would lay hands on people. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. He began to pray and teach and work. And in that process of life, they even took their robe, the outer garment of Paul, and they broke it in pieces, laid hands on it, anointed it, and sent it to those who were sick and demon-possessed. And people were set free, they were healed, and demons were cast out. Pastor Sean, that can't happen today. It's the 21st century. We don't believe all that stuff now. We're more dignified. We're better off. We're more educated. (laughs) I say this to you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The same power that was present in Acts chapter 2 is present right now. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the opportunity to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and walk out into the world and be world changers, to be Jesus proclaimers, to set the world on fire. I don't mean a wildfire up in the mountains or in anywhere in California. I mean the power of God that would cause the sinner to repent and bring families together and cause people People to find Jesus Christ and declare him as their Lord and their Savior on this day. People cried out to Peter, what must we do? He didn't tell them, go to church more. He didn't tell them, sit up straighter in the pew. He didn't tell them, don't sleep in church. Even if the preacher's long. He told them, repent, be baptized, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I share with you tonight, first of all, this week, Monday, October 26, 2020, when you get up in the morning, if you're born again, we're the saints, we're the church, we've repented. We are born again and set free, and we've been baptized, and we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Then go forward. Devote ourselves to a new routine. 
set the world on fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn the world upside down. Don't back up. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Press forward in the name of Jesus. Do something dramatic and powerful for God. Pastor, how many Pastor, seats, how many are, seats gonna, are, gonna are gonna be in that there? new building over there? Seven hundred chairs. Seven hundred chairs right next door. Let's fill up seven hundred chairs. Okay. Once we'll fill it up twice. But the question isn't how do we fill up seven hundred chairs? The question is. How do we win everybody to Jesus in Sacramento? Pastor Sean, you're crazy. You're crazy. I sure am. I absolutely am. And I'm very excited tonight by these five champions for the kingdom. I look at their Bibles. Some of them are pretty heavy Bibles pastor mentioned that and they're all ready to preach one of those bibles has all the tabs like hand put in there i saw that because they're reading their bible one of my favorite favorite words in the english language is wow everybody say that word with me wow Say a little better than that. Wow. Wow. You see, that word is the same going and coming. Backward and forward. Wow. For me, that word simply means this. Walking on word. The word of God. So when I see people and I say to them, wow. How are you doing, Pastor Sean? Wow. I'm walking on the Word. I'm walking in the Word. I'm walking through the Word. And I believe that these five young champions for God are walking on Word. And I believe tonight that God wants us to walk on the Word, walk in the Word, walk through the Word, be instant in season and out of season, to fight the good fight of faith, to march forward in His power and His anointing, and understand that the same God that sent Jesus Christ into the world, the same Jesus that sent the Holy Spirit into the world, is alive and well and powerful, and that we have the opportunity tonight to celebrate who Jesus is in our life, and to live out his power and walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit just like Peter and the apostles on the day of Acts in Acts cha- or day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and stand up on a rooftop and proclaim stand on a street corner and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. He'll be Lord in my house He'll be Lord in my car He'll be Lord in my truck He'll be Lord everywhere I go He'll be Lord everything I do I will live for Jesus I will die for Jesus. I will proclaim the power of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What shall we do? Repent. Be baptized. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Turn the world upside down. I added the fourth point. I want to pray with you tonight. And I want to encourage you, if you're here, as you're here tonight, anybody, and maybe you've been lonely and wondering, is there more? Maybe you struggle and you've wondered. Perhaps there's a despondency in your heart. Maybe one day you walked with God, but today you wandered and you wonder. You wonder, where am I at? I communicate to you tonight that it is simple as asking Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. 
in declaring that he's Lord. So no matter where you are right now in your life journey, Jesus Christ died for you. He gave his life for you. He knows your name. And he's calling out to you right now. And so I want to pray two prayers tonight. We'll pray the first prayer just sitting where you're seated. And I ask you your head, close your eyes. And as you have your head bowed and your eyes closed, I ask you to search your own heart. And I'm going to pray just, you know, David prayed, search me, O God. And I just invite you to search your heart tonight and say, God, search me now. You may be struggling in your life. You're just praying and contemplating for a moment. I just share with you. Again, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what sin is there, no matter what thoughts, no matter what anguish, no matter where you have wandered in your mind, or in your journey, Jesus is calling. So I ask you to join with me in prayer tonight, and I will pray for you. And as I pray for you, if you're wandering and wondering, and you say, I want to know Jesus and give my life to him, just call out his name. Jesus, I give you all I am. I give you all I am. If you've never been born again, Jesus, save me. If you committed to Jesus at one point and you've wandered away, Jesus, come back. Forgive me. I welcome you. Father, I thank you for every person here tonight. And in this moment, every person watching, God, if there's one person here or watching this broadcast, Father, that right where we are right now, one person that says to you, Lord Jesus, come back. Forgive me. I repent. I ask you to save me, to set me free, to restore to me the joy of salvation tonight. I pray for victory in my mind, victory in my family, victory in my life. God, I pray for every person here. Victory in family, victory in life, victory in their heart. God, victory. Set people free. I pray in Jesus' name, victory. Amen. Second prayer, I invite you to stand with me. Now I know and I understand I'm the, I'm the American guy, right? But I'm going to ask you to do something tonight. And I don't want you to be uncomfortable, but I just, I really believe that the church, the body of Christ, in the 21st century, in 2020, we must take a stand. We are fighting a spiritual battle. And we have to rise up. We have to stand up. We have to proclaim that Jesus lives. Amen. In the face of the culture, Jesus lives. Amen. In the face of the culture that would say, stop saying his name, say it louder. Jesus lives. Amen. Jesus lives. Amen. Jesus saves. Amen. Jesus saves. So tonight, I ask you to do this with me. If I had time, I'd go to Ezekiel chapter 37, and I would preach about the dry bones around. And then Ezekiel's taken to the valley, and God says to him, prophesy to these bones that they would live, and they stand up, and they join together bone to bone. Flesh comes upon them, and he says to Ezekiel, prophesy that they have breath in their body. And all of a sudden, the breath comes into them. 
I'm convinced today that God is ready to take the bones of Christianity, the church across America, and raise up the church and join it together and breathe His Spirit into the life of the church. That is a prophetic word. It is time to stand up and get up and go out and transform this world in the name of Jesus Christ. So I ask you tonight, lift your hands toward heaven with me. Toward God. God, we praise you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we declare we are the church. We repent. We've been baptized. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. We are the church. And tonight, God, I pray you would pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, fresh, new, refreshing, revival, renewal. God, raise us up as your force in this world. Hallelujah. God, we pray victory tonight. We pray authority tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I ask you right where you are. As the Holy Spirit moves in you to pray. Pray for Sacramento. Pray for your family. Pray for your neighborhood. Pray for your church. Let's pray together right now out loud. Praying to God in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Father. We worship you tonight. We pray tonight, God. We pray for victory. We pray for fire from heaven. We pray for your anointing to be poured out. God, we pray for Sacramento. We pray for Roseville. We pray for Highlands. We pray for the entire area. God, we pray for revival. We pray for renewal. We pray for your anointing. God, wake us up tonight. Give us power and anointing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! 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 Father, we pray fire from heaven. We pray power from heaven. We pray victory from heaven. Hallelujah. God, I pray for revival in this church. I pray for revival in this city. God, we pray for Maranatha Church. God, start a fire right here. We pray for revival in the name of Jesus Christ. In the power of Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sondo la batada da babate. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. There are young men and young women right here. God has called you into ministry. God is calling you to preach. Step up, step out. Don't pursue other dreams. Pursue Jesus. It's time to move forward in the power of Jesus' name. What shall we do? Let's turn this city upside down. Amen. Laudați să fie Domnul! Ce strop de har minunat să lasă Domnul peste noi! Și în seara aceasta dorim și ne rugăm pentru toți cei care încă nu s-au întors la Domnul Ca să iau o hotărâre și Dumnezeu să-i ajute. Amin. Urmează să ne apropiem de actul botezului în apă propriu zis. Și aș vrea prin fratele păstor Elu Nicolae să ne rugăm Domnului pentru actul botezului, pentru candidați, pentru lucrarea care ne stă înainte. Vă rog să vin aici în față, să ne conducă în această rugăciune de binecuvântare și Dumnezeu să ne asculte rugăciune. Amin. Tată iubit din cerul, ne închinem înaintea sfințeniei tale și îți mulțumim pentru cercetarea Duhului Tău ce sfânt. 
Îți mulțumim, Doamne, că și în seara aceasta ne-ai vorbit ființilor noastre. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, pentru că Tu ne-ai binecuvântat, ne-ai protejat, ne-ai ocrotit și suntem înaintea Sfințeniei Tale. Și în aceste momente de seară, Doamne, Te rugăm în numele Tău, binecuvintează întreaga asistență. Binecuvintează, Doamne, candidații de botez. Te rugăm, Doamne, să-i ajut să te slujească pe Tine. Păzește de tot ce este primejdios, Doamne. Și fă Doamne Iisuse, ca în vremea aceasta de pe urmă să fie adevărați copii ai Tăi. Te rugăm de asemenea, Doamne Iisuse, binecuvintează, Doamne, actul botezului. Binecuvintează, Doamne, frații păstori care vor oficia această lucrare. Te rugăm în numele Tău, Doamne Iisuse, autorizează întreaga slujbă cu autoritatea Ta divină peste noi peste adunare, peste cei care sunt cu noi online, te rugăm în numele Tău, binecuvântă-i, cercetează-i, mă întoarce, Doamne, și astăzi oameni la Tine, ajută, Doamne, să se pocăiască, ajută-i, Doamne Iisusă, să se mărturisească, ajută-i, Doamne, să încheie un legământ cu Tine prin botezul în apă, ajută-i, Doamne, și botează cu Duhul Sfânt, pentru că în lumea aceasta, Doamne, este nevoie de oameni care să ducă mesajul Evangheliei. De ce, Doamne, autorizează lucrarea Ta cu puterea Ta, Doamne, și îți mulțumim. Te rugăm de asemenea, Doamne, rămâi cu noi în continuare și lasă harul Tău, binecuvântarea Ta și îți mulțumim în numele Tău. Amin. Urmează ca să vă invit să ocupați locurile și ca să ne organizăm, să putem să intrăm în apa botezului, în baptistierul care este aici în spate, o să rugăm coriștii și Youth Choir să poftească jos, să se acomodeze, o să fie vizibil pentru toți dintre dumneavoastră, deci o să fie a, a, făcut posibil ca să puteți să vedeți, aș vrea să ne îngăduiți. Uh, we'll have first the young ladies, and they will go on the other side, and we'll call you one by one, and then the young men will come on this side, and we'll call you. Pentru... Toți care sunteți cu noi în seara aceasta, zicem, din toată inima, lăuda să fie Domnul. Amin. Și ne rugăm ca asemenea momente, când suflete se întorc la Domnul, să dea Dumnezeu cât mai multe. Amin. Trăim într-o vreme a sfârșitului, trăim într-o vreme a pandemiei, într-o vreme când oamenii sunt frământați, când necazurile se mulțesc, dar și că marea lui Dumnezeu se identifică, se intensifică, Chemarea Domnului pentru fiecare dintre noi să ne predăm în brațul lui Dumnezeu. Aș vrea să vă reamintesc, stimații mei, că duminica viitoare se va schimba ora. Dumneavoastră sunteți oameni moderni care știți, vrem să țineți cont de schimbarea orei ca duminica viitoare dimineața să putem să fim la timp. Și apoi, de asemenea, dacă n-am menționat în după masa aceasta... 7 noiembrie, în atenția dumneavoastră, sâmbăta, să fie de asemenea și Benefit Dinner pentru proiectul de construcție. Haideți să cântăm spre lauda Domnului din cântările care frații le-au pregătit și în timpul acesta împreună cu fratele păstor Samu și vom intra în apă și vom efectua botezul în apă. Dumnezeu să fie onorat în toate. Amin.
se află Vanessa Antone. Ea este bucuroasă în ziua de astăzi că are părinții prezenți, are rudele prezente, are Biserica Domnului care este aici și este gata să facă una dintre cele mai importante mărturisiri ale vieții ei. Vanessa, restul Domnul Iisus Hristos ca Mântuitor și Salvator al vieții tale. Da, cred. Crezi că El prin sângele și prin jerfa Lui de pe Golgota a spălat toate păcatele tale. Da, cred. Crezi tu și ești hotărâtă să-L urmezi pe Domnul pentru tot restul vieții tale? Da, cred. Pe baza mărturisirii tale și a credinței în Dumnezeul cel veșnic, te botezăm azi în numele Tatălui, al Fiului și al Duhului Sfânt. Amin. Te laud, te laud, te laud că ce-ai iubit sufletul meu. Ești sfânt, ești drept, ești bun, ești mare, te laud că numai Tu ești Dumnezeu. Fiindcă atât de mult a iubit Dumnezeu lumea că a dat pe singurul lui Fiu, pentru ca oricine crede în El să nu piară, ci să aibă viață veșnică. În apa botezului a intrat sora Denisa Antone. Sora Denisa doresc să te întreb în fața lui Dumnezeu, în fața martorilor văzuți și nevăzuți, în fața întregii audiențe care este aici, dacă crezi din toată inima ta că Isus Hristos este Fiul lui Dumnezeu. Da, cred. Te întreb dacă crezi că El este și Mântuitorul tău personal. Da, cred. Până când dorești să slujești pe Domnul Isus Hristos și să fie Domnul și Mântuitorul sufletului tău? Pentru toată viața mea. Pe baza credinței și mărturisirii tale, noi te botezăm în numele Tatălui și al Fiului și al Duhului Sfânt. Amin. Ce dragoste de Dumnezeu să mă rurege în locul meu. Ce dragoste Botezului avem pe sora Priscila Ușvat, care este gata în ziua de astăzi să mărturisească în fața cerului, în fața părinților, în fața bisericii care este martoră, ceea ce se întâmplă în inima și în viața ei, că dorește să-L iubească și să slujească pe Domnul. Sora Priscila, te întreb, crezi tu din toată inima? Căci Iisus Hristos este Fiul lui Dumnezeu și Mântuitorul tău. Yes, I do. De asemenea, vreau să te, încreb, să te întreb, crezi tu că El este acela care îți va purta de grijă pentru tot restul vieții tale? Yes, I do. Ești gata să slujești până când Domnul te cheamă la El acasă? Oh, my God. Pe baza mărturisirii și credinței tale în Dumnezeul atoputernic, noi te botezăm azi în numele Tatălui, al Fiului și al Duhului Sfânt. Amin. Botezului a intrat fratele Beniamin Ușvat. Frate Beniamin, doresc să te întreb înaintea martorilor văzuți și nevăzuți, înaintea lui Dumnezeu, înaintea familiei tale, a prietenilor tăi, dacă tu crezi din toată inima ta că Domnul Isus Hristos este Fiul lui Dumnezeu și Mântuitorul tău. Da, încred. 
Vreau să te întreb dacă crezi din toată inima că Domnul Isus Hristos ți-a iertat toate păcatele tale, toată viața ta și El îți dă un viitor și o nădejde. Da, îmi cred. Până când vrei tu să-L urmezi pe Domnul Isus Hristos? For all my life. Domnul să te ajute. Pe baza mărturisirii credinței tale și la porunca Domnului, noi te botezăm în numele Tatălui și al Fiului și al Sfântului Duh. Amin. Ce mare e! Jason Miholetz is ready to declare his trust in Jesus and his decision to follow him. You are blessed to have your parents, your relatives, your friends, and the whole church. Even the relatives from Chicago are watching you. <laughs> Miholetz are more than 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> A lot of them. And we're happy to have some of them with us in our church. Jason, I ask you, do you believe that yes. Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do. Do you believe also that he died and rose again for you? I do. For how long are you ready to serve him? Forever. Based on your testimony and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. octombrie 2020. O zi care se scrie în istoria celor cinci persoane care s-au botezat. O zi care va fi marcată în istoria bisericii Maranata. O zi care va fi marcată și despre care ne vom aminti chiar și în ceruri. Pentru că a fost o zi de sărbătoare, o zi în care ne-am bucurat în prezența Domnului. Vreau să vă mulțumesc tuturor care a fost cu noi la închinare, a fi martori la decizia celor care s-au botezat și vă doresc o săptămână sub protecția lui Dumnezeu, Domnul să vă binecuvinteze. Pentru cei care s-au botezat, please take a minute, give them a hug, embrace them and tell them that they have taken the best decision in their life to follow Jesus. A voi să ne rugăm pentru ei ca Dumnezeu să-i țină pe calea Lui. I would like also to thank Dr. Sean O'Neill and his wonderful family that has been with us and ministered to us. Dumnezeu să-L binecuvinteze. Mulțumesc uh, tuturor care ați ajutat într-un fel sau altul în organizarea acestei bucurii și acestei sărbători. Vă mulțumesc tuturor rudelor care ați venit să fiți alături de cei dragi ai dumneavoastră la botezul în apă și pentru toate acestea am vrea să mulțumim lui Dumnezeu prin rugăciune. Prin fratele păstor Nelu Mois, ne vom ruga Domnului și cu respect vă invit la stand up și fratele ne va conduce în această rugăciune de mulțumire. Înainte să ne despărțim, aș vrea să vă rog 
în săptămâna aceasta și până la alegeri să ne rugăm Domnului pentru țara aceasta, pentru ca Dumnezeu să călăuzească alegerile anului 2020 și Dumnezeu să îngăduie președintelui Trump să mai slujească. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze cu harul și pacea Domnului, biserica să poate elibera. God bless you.